Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel Univentry. I am Sunit Kumar and I am thrilled to have you here. So if you are a student dreaming of studying abroad, then you are at the right place. Today we will listen to someone who is all set to go to US for admissions this year. Her stories, struggles and triumphs will inspire and motivate you as you embark on your own study abroad adventure. So we have with us uh, Shavi, uh, who has done her uh, computer science engineering from uh, BITS Dubai uh, and she passed out this year and uh, now she applied. So she, uh, you know, prepared for GRE exams and then, then she uh, wrote that exam and then she uh, got a wonderful score in that GRE exams. And, and then uh, she applied to various universities and now you, she has got a call from university at uh, Buffalo state uh, uh, which is uh, in new york and uh, she'll be do doing a course in data sciences i suppose yes. right so congratulations on uh, receiving an admission uh, call to study in the us can you briefly introduce yourself and the university you have been admitted to Shelby? hello everyone my name is chevy and uh, i completed my schooling from lotus valley international school after that, I went to Dubai to pursue my bachelor's in engineering from BITS Dubai. I went there in 2019 and I graduated this year. So I applied to various universities uh, in USA for my master's and uh, I received an admissions from University at Buffalo in New York and I'm going there for my master's in data science. Ah, great. So how does it feel to have received an admission call from a university in the US? Can you share your initial uh, reaction and emotion upon receiving that news? So I've always wanted to go to USA for my master's and uh, after I received a few admission letters, I was very happy that I've, my dreams are coming true. And then I decided to go to university at Buffalo and uh, it felt very nice. Great. So, and, and what factors influence your decision to apply for higher education in the US? So, the quality of education is very good in the United States, which is why I wanted to apply there. The research opportunities are great over there. And uh, it's a great place to just connect with people and uh, make some contacts and they can help you in getting internships and some jobs over there in the United States. Good, good. Uh, could you walk us through your application process, what were the key steps involved and any advice for other students going through the same process? So the first step is shortlisting universities. So what I did was I made a list of 20 universities and then I shortlisted it down to around seven or eight universities I want to apply to. After that, you have to get your transcripts and various documents in order. Then uh, you have to start preparing for your exams as well. You can give either the GRE or the GMAT. And then for your English proficiency, there's IELTS or TOEFL. So whatever is your course requirement, that you, for that you have to start studying and planning. And then you have to start working on your statement of purpose, which is extremely important for the applications process, as well as getting your LORs, letter of recommendations over there. So. That's also very important. And then finally, you have to decide your financial aid, whether you want a scholarship or for some sort of help in that. So these are the things which needs planning. So you have to start working on them when you decide to study abroad. Okay. okay. So what do you think set, set your application apart and helped you secure admission in the university of your choice? So my coursework over there was very strong. During my four years at my, uh, when I was doing my uh, bachelor's degree, I ensured I did some projects and research at my university over uh, there in Bits Dubai. And I did projects in machine learning and deep learning and they really helped build my application, uh, which was very helpful when it came to applying for masters. In and uh, how did you choose the specific university and program of study that you have been admitted to while you were you know shortlisting 20 say 7 and then mm -hmm. from 7 to 1 how did you do that uh, the reason i chose data science was because it's very mathematics oriented and i loved maths 
So I knew I would be pursuing data science itself. And uh, as far as shortlisting is concerned, I wanted to go to a research-based university. So I sh that was the first parameter I used to shortlist universities. And uh, University at Buffalo is the largest uh, state university when it comes to research. And uh, it also receives $400 million per year based like only for the research. And uh, that is why I decided to go ahead with this university. Good, good. And um, what are your expectations and goals for your academic journey in the US? How do you envision this experience shaping your futures? So when I go, when I will go to the United States, the first uh, priority will be academic excellence because that is very important. Apart from that, a balance in the work and stuff, like professionally and academically, the balance is very important. Excelling in academics as well as uh, making connections so you can help get research opportunities, internship opportunities, connecting with people, interacting with people. So that is what I'm keeping in mind when I go over there. And um, are there any particular challenges or obstacles you faced during the application process and how did you overcome them? So the applications process can be very daunting at times. There are so many things to do and you often feel like there's not much time to finish all of that. And I often felt like the deadlines are approaching and I'm not prepared, but you just have to take it one step at a time, give one exam, start writing your SOP little by little and just be sure of the deadlines. That is, then it should be done. And uh, uh, how are you preparing for the transition from India to the US? Uh, what steps are you taking to adapt to a new culture and education system there? So uh, now my summer break is going on and uh, I sit and I just learn more about the area, the culture, what food is there, what festivals do they celebrate. So when I go over there, I can blend in a little better. And um, apart from that, there are, there are many webinars which they conduct for international students uh, to welcome us so that we feel ho like home when we are there in terms of uh, how to get settled over there and where you can go and buy of groceries and everything. So I attend those webinars, I interact with the professors over there and they're really welcoming. Great. So uh, do you have any concerns or apprehensions about studying in the US? How, how do you plan to address them? I don't have any concerns uh, as such. It's a great place and I'm very excited to go and study over there. But there are a few small things here and there which international students are afraid of. Like you can, you might feel homesick at times or like it's a little scary that it's a very new place and you're so far away from home. So these little things are there, but otherwise the US is a great place and I've never had any second thoughts about going there. Good, good. And how do you plan to uh, make the most of your time in the US, both academically and personally? Are there any extracurricular activities or organizations you intend to get involved in? So I, uh, I, I intend on keeping a very balanced life over there personally and ac academically. And uh, interacting with people is the best way because we are all new. We don't know each other. So that is how you can blend in with the place. And uh, as far as extracurriculars are concerned, I would really like to do some volunteering activities over there. I've been looking for some part-time jobs as well on campus and uh, I play the guitar as well. So I would like to join some music clubs and be a part of it. Good, good. And uh, uh, have you researched the support services and resources available to international student at your chosen university and what are some of the steps uh, you will take to ensure a smooth transition and successful academic experience. So I think you have covered some of this but yeah. Yes, so uh, the main institution over there is the ISS called International Student Services and they deal with all kinds of problems that international students might have. 
starting from visa to immigration to getting settled if you want to if you are not getting to the us in time if you have a delayed admission so anything you have they're always ready to support you and guide you so we never feel lost when we're uh, preparing for the transition to you know, the us okay and then is it uh, is it a central body in us or no no it's just to uh, limited to the university okay so for every this university yeah, every for university this would have have this. their own separate iss okay uh, uh, when did you start preparing for the GRE and how did you determine the ideal time to begin your preparation? So I started doing some self-study around my third year of my bachelor's and that I felt is a good time to start your preparations because two years is more than enough to prepare for GRE. And uh, after like, but if you want, like some people start in their final year also, which is also okay. And uh, what resources or study material did you find helpful in your GRE test preparation? Are there any specific books, websites or online courses that you would recommend? So the top priority should be the official material which is given by the ETS, the books, the websites and they have a few mock tests also. So that is the first priority. Apart from that, I did the Univentary study material as well. So that also really helped me during my study process. And uh, did you join any GRE test preparation program or hire a tutor to help you uh, with your studies? How did they contribute to your uh, overall preparation? Most of the time I was in Dubai only for my bachelor's. So over there I did the ETS uh, books and a few mock tests. While I was in India, I uh, thanks to your uni ventre and the study material, that was what I, that, what I joined. And the mock tests and the worksheets and all were really helpful. Okay, great. Uh, good to know this. <laughs> so can you share some uh, strategies or uh, techniques that helped you improve your uh, test taking skills? and increase your score in each section of the GRE, uh, like verbal reasoning or quantitative reasoning or analytical writing? So for the verbal and analytical, you have to start early because it's English and you need some time to prepare. There are so many words that you have to memorize. The vocabulary is huge. So just start doing 10, 15 words a day. And uh, for your analytical writing, just read as much as you can. Books, newspapers, magazines, journals. The more you read, the more ideas you will get on how to write English fluently. As far as maths is concerned, it's more about the strategies rather than step-by-step -step solving of the questions. So you, you don't need to solve everything. You can uh, use tips and tricks like plugging in values or taking random values of X and then solving it. So it's more about the shortcuts in GRE. Okay. okay. Uh, so what advice would you give to students who are just starting their GRE test preparation? Any tips for staying motivated throughout the process? So there always comes a time when students are like, okay, now I have to start for GRE. And we're always confused like what to do, how to do, where do we start? So what I did was I took a free mock test which was available online. So it gives like a rough idea of where we stand, which is very important because that is where you need to work from. It doesn't matter if you score only 30%, 40% or 100% in that mock test. It's like a base. And from there, we need to start building up. So based on that mock test, make a list of uh, chapters. These are my weak areas, these are my average areas, and these, are, these chapters were a piece of cake. And then start your preparation accordingly. And uh, how did you manage that uh, test, test uh, anxiety or nervousness on the day of the exam? So on the test day, I was very nervous. So uh, all I would suggest is that uh, stay hydrated, eat well, you know, and uh, positive affirmations helped a lot. Uh, telling yourself that you can do well, you can do well, and uh, just do some deep breathing exercises on the way to the test center. And just stay calm and trust that whatever you've done is sufficient and trust your preparation. That's it. And uh, did you participate in any research project, internship or volunteer activities to enhance your profile? 
and how did these experiences shape your application? I would like to add something more. Uh, when did you actually start uh, working on your profile? Uh, was it in the college or, or was it before that also? How is it? So, uh, during my school, I uh, used to play the guitar. I was in the music club. And I even did a certification from Trinity College London, School of Rock and Pop. So I have a certificate from there. And I played basketball also. So uh, these two, three things were there only, not much. Then uh, when I went to uh, Bits Dubai, then over there we had some computer web, uh, like um, webinars and all of that. So I conducted some of those webinars. Then we had a robotics club in our campus so I joined the club it deal it dealt with like making drones and conducting workshops on drones so that was my area of interest so I joined that club I took part in that club as well and uh, so extracurriculars only these many were there and apart from the apart from these I did not do any volunteering activities and um, as far as the research was concerned I did a few projects in college which uh, helped me in my computer science degree as well and I knew it would help for my masters as well so projects in deep learning machine learning a lot of CS related areas I worked in that so that really helped like strengthening your coursework basically uh, did you apply for any scholarship or financial aid and how did you research and find the funding opportunities uh, that were available so I was not looking for any scholarships when I was applying for masters and my particular course did not offer any scholarship as well but if students want scholarships then many uh, websites are there many resources are there online you can go through them and you can learn about that scholarship and you can apply for those depending on if that university is offering if that course is offering so just do some research and then act accordingly. And how did you select the individuals uh, to write your letter of recommendation and what qualities or expertise did you look for in your recommenders? So I really wanted an LOR from my HOD, the HOD of computer science over there. So I started preparing from second year onwards. Like I said, she conducted the computer workshops and everything. So I always ensured I took part in those and that way I would interact with her and get her to know a little. Mm -hmm. Then in third year, I took some subjects under her. She taught uh, machine learning and she taught AI as well. So I was in her classes. And then finally in the fourth year, I wrote a thesis under my HOD. So that way she really got to know me well. And when I approached her for the LOR, she wrote it for me. And uh, since data science is related to mathematics and statistics, so I took one from the statistics professor as well. And then uh, I did an internship as well. So the third LOR I took from their internship uh, office. So two of them were academic and the third LOR was a uh, little industrial experience related. And uh, did you provide uh, your recommenders with any guidance or specific information to help them craft your LOR? Or if so, what kind of detail did you share? So with my HOD, she wrote about the thesis I wrote under her. And uh, she also wrote about how well I performed in her classes, the ones she taught and I took under her. So just that only and then the statistics professor wrote about my uh, experience in coding related things and which and the projects i did related to data analysis which is also a subject in my master's course so i have been preparing for that and then um, the industrial experience lor just wrote about how i can balance work and personal life and industrial experience so that balance is what they wrote about and uh, how did you approach writing your statement of purpose? Uh, what steps did you take uh, to ensure a well-structured and compelling narrative? So there are certain bullet points which have to be in the statement of purpose no matter what. So just make a bullet pointed list of things you need to write like about yourself, your academic journey, what pursued you to 
take that particular course and how you've been inspired to take that course and what have you done any internships any work experiences so make a bullet list and then write one one paragraph about each of the pointers so that way you are explaining each and every point and you're not missing out anything as well apart from that you can go through some sample sops online as well to get a rough idea of how to write it and you can get some ideas from there as well and uh, did you uh, tailor tailor your sop uh, for each university or program you applied to or how did you make sure it reflected your specific interest in each institution so this is a very common mistake that students i have observed made even my classmates made the same mistake that they write one sop and they submit it everywhere but you have to tailor it according to each and every university depending on what their course structure is and how they're offering that particular course for example if i take uh, data science some universities were offering a more mathematical course structure data analysis probability statistics so my sop was tailored around how i love maths and how i can contribute to their course curriculum based on my maths skills mm. some universities had courses tailored around coding coding and data science so you have to structure your sop around the coding part so in those sop i wrote more about machine learning and coding and c and java and all those kinds of things so you have to make a list of each items that the university wants and emphasis on these things and less emphasis on these things and then structure the sop accordingly so and and what key components did you include in your resume for your application and how did you uh, decide on the information to include and the uh, overall format so the relevant skills required for that particular course are very important if you don't have those skills they will not take your application or they will not hire you and it's important to update everything properly in the correct format you can look up formats online and then everything should be in bullet list and very short crisp concise resume and you should also ensure that you update your linkedin correctly and insert a url of the linkedin in your resume so that they can refer in case uh, they want to have a deeper look into your profile Uh, how did you address any weakness or challenges in your academic or personal background and if applicable how did you turn them into opportunities for growth or learning so uh, one major drawback i found in my application was uh, i did not have a lot of extra curricular activities and i ensured them that although the extra curriculars are not there my coursework is strong and i've done these projects and these research opportunities over there and i ensured them that when i come to us i will definitely enroll in those uh, extra curricular activities so it was not very balanced but there was nothing i could do so i just strengthened my coursework and my academics and uh, my particular course did not want a very uh, all rounded profile they were specifically they wanted the academics itself so it was not really an issue for me when i was applying over there and um, how did you ensure that your essay was free from errors and had proper grammar and punctuation so did you seek professional editing or proofreading assistance from someone so after i wrote the sop uh, thanks to univentry they helped correct and they helped proofread my essay and add a few more points to make it a little, little more interesting and uh, apart from the professional help i also had my friends and family read it and if they had any more pointers they wanted me to add so i included those things as well okay. and uh, how did you manage your time effectively to complete multiple essays for different universities any tips for staying organized during the application uh, process or essay writing process the number one tip i would recommend is to start early because essay writing takes a lot of time you have to do a lot of research about each university and what they want from their applicant so you have to start early and be consistent throughout the process do little bit every single day don't leave anything for the last moment be it your sop lor any part of your application okay and then how early would you recommend that 
third year. Third I started year. in my third year. Okay. Okay. And, and what advice would you give to students who are just starting their application uh, essays? And what key elements uh, should they focus on while uh, crafting their essays? So, uh, like I mentioned before, make a list of items of, of uh, things that that particular university wants. And according to that, you have to ensure that those points are included in the SOP of that particular university. Don't write a generalized one and submit it everywhere. If you uh, include their points in their SOP, it will give them a good impression that you've researched well about their academic curriculum and their course curriculum and you're writing accordingly. So that should be ensured. Okay, okay. So uh, thank you, Savvy. And uh, before we wrap up today's episode, uh, I thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your experience and journey uh, of, uh, of uh, your admission process in the US uh, with the viewers. Uh, your insights uh, have been incredibly valuable and I'm sure your, our listeners have gained a lot from this conversation. Uh, and uh, to all our listeners, thank you for tuning in and we'll be back with more exciting content next week. Until then, stay curious and keep exploring. Uh, thank you uh, so much for watching. Uh, uh, keep on uh, viewing uh, our, our videos. We'll keep on uh, putting new content uh, every uh, week. Uh, so uh, uh, if you like this uh, you know, interview uh, or I'll say talk uh, podcast basically. So if you liked it, keep on uh, watching it, share it with your friends and uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, thanks for joining in. Thank you. Thank you.